Hey guys, it's been a while. So there's a video showing off the 0.3 of uh, Stream Control, and uh, it's actually the second version that I made since uh, the last video I've made, and uh, I think I've added quite a few things. As you can see, it's a tab layout, and uh, it's basically a streamlined version of the old layout, and nothing is broken if you're using the old SWS, and uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, but there are people who do want to use the old layout, and uh, I honestly don't know why, but uh, if you really wanted to, you could. You could just open the old layout file and uh, open that, click OK, and uh, there you go, you've got the old layout. So the interesting thing uh, that I think most people want to see is uh, the layout I used for C major. Here we go, I'm going to open that. Okay, and uh, here you go. This is the layout I use for C major. As you can see, there is a bunch of uh, new functionality added since uh, 0.2, and uh, I think it's pretty awesome. So next, I'm gonna show you uh, how this stuff works in action. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the C major overlays that I use for C major, and uh, there you go. So now I'm going to show you how this all works. I'm going to type in something for the player 1 field here. Player 1. And then player 2. And uh, player 1 is from Singapore. And player 2 is from Japan. So I'm going to click save. And there you go. It updates. Now I know uh, my my layouts look pretty nice but that's not the point. I'm gonna show you this really cool feature I have. As soon as I start typing, a bunch of names will come up and I can select any one of them and it will fill it up for me. And this is really useful because uh, in a big tournament there's so many players, it's pretty much impossible to have the names of the players off the top of your head and uh, this is really helpful. And uh, there's another very useful feature that I have. Once you uh, fill in that name, it is able to fill in the country of that player. And this is useful because uh, the more information you display to the viewers, the more you have to fill in basically and uh, this takes that out of your hands and makes it really easy. And the names that you've already typed in will get saved to the same database and uh, that's very helpful. So how does this work? What ha basically happens is it loads the information from a CSV file that is in the same directory as your layout file. And uh, it's a very standard CSV file, yeah, as you can see. Uh, it's just uh, name, separated by comma, and uh, country. And you can see game will be up on top there. And these are pretty easy to edit. Uh, one of the easiest ways is uh, just import it into Google Docs open, choose file, navigate to wherever you saved your CSV file, and uh, up, watch, wait for it to upload and open, and there you go, it's right there. Really easy, you can edit it from here as well. This basically makes it really easy to export your uh, player names from say a Excel file that you're keeping all your registrations in. Really simple. Uh, just copy the names and the, the relevant fields and then paste them here. And uh, you can easily save it by clicking download as and comma separated values. That's what you want there. It's really simple. And that's basically it for CSV files. Uh, as you can imagine, this really saves a lot of time. Now as you can see, I've got these little checkboxes here. These are the E-Tanks that I sadly didn't really get to use because uh, no one in the winner's bracket actually lost, so I didn't get to take them away. But uh, they're there. It's a fun thing you can do to get uh, to display who's in the winner's bracket in Grand Finals, rather than entering it into the player field, which I think is a workable solution, but if you have a better option, I think you should use it. So obviously there's a bunch of other stuff here, 
let's take a look at the uh, brackets I guess which is something that I think I'll be using a lot more in the future and uh, there we go as you can see it animates it's pretty nice uh, I haven't filled up anything yet so this is something new in 0.3 uh, in 0.3 you can create these tabs which have uh, scroll areas it's really useful to have uh, because uh, there's no way I'm gonna fit uh, a top 8 bracket in just that small area without it so we're gonna fill this up I'm gonna put J Wong versus Gamer B and I'm gonna click save and I'm gonna reload that scene and you can see that uh, it populates the uh, flag and it's got everything in there it's pretty nice and uh, one thing you notice is if I put J Wong up in that bracket you notice that it automatically grays out the Game of Bee's name. It's pretty uh, cool. It's a neat way to present the bracket to the viewer rather than just uh, taking a screenshot or that or screen capturing the window that challenge is open in. So right now you could add as many fields as you want, but uh, I think that'd be kind of messy, and I'm actually considering making a module for this that would. Uh, maybe dynamically load the bracket from a challenge uh, URL but uh, that's really pie in the sky right now so you can bring this all the way to winners fin to grand finals and uh, it would show, show you uh, who won as you can see I'm gonna reload the scene and there you go So another thing I think people enjoyed doing C major was the tweets. So you just copy a URL, put it in here, click fetch tweet, and it will get you an auth token when it says auth token received. Click it again, and you get OK. You don't need to do that every time, it's just the first time you start it up and press fetch tweet. So now you go to the tweet, and uh, there you go, it's loaded. Let's uh, load another one I think. Let's see, we've got Mark Julio here. Shout out to Mark Man. Click fetch tweet. Okay. Click save and uh, reload that scene. And from the depths of cyberspace, it's Mark Julio. There we go. So, one last thing that I think people really enjoyed doing uh, C Major is the trophies. I know a lot of people love these. So, how these work is, uh, let's think of a fun one. I think, uh, yeah, let's go with Eliminated Kazunoko. Click save. And you'll notice that that all got filled in just based on the trophy name. Same way the, the names are. And here's the trophy list that we have. It's the uh, same, same thing basically. And uh, now that's saved, let's uh, click the logo. That's how I activate it. And that's our trophy. Pretty fun. Pretty cool way to spice things up, make things a little more interesting for the viewer. And uh, it's pretty easy to add your own trophies. All you need to do is type in the name, and uh, you need a square PNG file. Yeah, open the trophy folder here. This is not the right one. There we go. And I'm going to drag the round one logo into that folder. Now I'm going to take the file name from that, copy, and put it in the picture. I'll just type in whatever I want. I'm from round one, which is apparently a trophy somehow. <laughs> and then we're going to click save. And there you go. It shows up and it's really easy to do these on the fly. Well, not really easy, but it's a lot easier than it would be otherwise if I didn't have this system. And that's basically it for 0 0.3. It's a really useful system and uh, it made running a C major a lot easier and a lot more fun with all the uh, little extras that I was able to squeeze in using it. Now something worth noting is that uh, I do eventually plan to release a streamlined version of these files. I'm not doing it now because uh, the 
<laughs> I basically put the bash the whole thing together and uh, it's not very readable, it make your eyes bleed. So just sit tight for now, eventually it'll get done. And now we're going to take a look at how the uh, the layout files actually look like. This is a little bit complicated because of the uh, top 8 stuff in there, but other than that it's actually not that bad. It's uh, relatively straightforward if you are somewhat technical minded. And I'll be posting this on my website uh, probably right after this video goes up. So check that out. So I know a lot of people have been asking me for OBS support and uh, guess what, it's here. This actually managed to sit by me and uh, it's actually been supported for quite a while now. It actually works pretty decently. As you can see the animations work and uh, it works fine for the most part. The only real problem is I can't interact with the flash files using the mouse or keyboard from what I can tell. So there is also a pretty big problem here. When you render a full 720p browser window, sometimes it just crashes and I don't know if it's just my computer or or I don't know, but it's fairly annoying and uh, I don't think uh, I can use this in a production system when it's like that. However, I have actually made uh, some HTML5 overlays. These are basically the same uh, overlays as this uh, scoreboard with flags, I think it's called, yeah. And it works basically the same, it's exactly the same stuff except it doesn't look quite as nice, but I'm otherwise pretty happy with how it's turned out. So you know that crashing thing I mentioned earlier? Uh, one way you can bypass it is by only rendering the top 100 pixels of the browser. From what I can tell it works fine this way and uh, if you're gonna use it to stream an event, this is how, the way you do it, I think. I'll probably make a full tutorial on how to use uh, my overlays in OBS in, sometime in the future. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope uh, my program has been will be as useful to you as it's been to me, and indeed the com entire community. Uh, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, happy streaming.